I didn't do my first uh, show on my own until 1970, and I did a little show in town at a place called the Dejaro Theater. It's still there, and they wanted Sunday night entertainment. There was, there was a constant Sunday night fundraiser, and so I put a few songs together and went out there and sang them, and that was the beginning. My name is Wesla Whitfield. I majored in music, minored in drama, and English. I graduated, it hurts, in January of 1972. I grew up in central California on the coast in a little town called Santa Maria, which is a pretty fascist place. There was no real music except for this one voice teacher. And I was so lucky because she was from the big city of Kansas City. She had been taught classical training. It's called the Bel Canto Method, and it's a great foundation because you learn how to support your voice, and once you know how to do that, then you can sing any kind of music you want, and you won't hurt yourself. And here in the middle of Podunk, I found this teacher. I was so lucky. I came up here because the music department here was so well respected, and besides, it was San Francisco, and I always knew that I was going to live in San Francisco. A semester was almost $300, <gasps> and it, I, had, I had a little private room. It was just, I had everything there I needed, and I rented a refrigerator. I had a radio. I had a telephone. I didn't have a television. Who needed one? And I had a wonderful view of Lake Merced, and I could see the sun going down every night behind that little bridge. It was, um, it was a great existence. As soon as I left college, I was hired by the San Francisco Opera as a salaried chorister. I was with him for a short time, and then I became a singing cocktail waitress, which is like the lowest form of music. And I did that for a few years, and I was in a couple of shows. And then in 77, I became um, vertically challenged, and I was not doing anything for about a year. And then I went back to singing in clubs, and I've been doing that ever since. I was shot by two little kids, and they were like 10 and 12 years old. I have been in this wheelchair for, it'll be 31 years in April of 2008. It's been a very interesting experience because I walked around for 30 years before that. And so when I see people reacting to me in an inappropriate way, I have to remind myself that that is very likely the way I reacted to people who were in a wheelchair before I became a person in a wheelchair. It's been a very interesting way to view the world. Not always fun, but as I've become more comfortable with being the person in the wheelchair, it is, it's not as stressful, and it has taught me so much about myself, mostly things I didn't want to know, but things that are handy, and in that way I feel privileged to find out about stuff about myself. I, I've learned that it's going to be there. I still have to go over the, all the, the hoops and through all the things that I had in my brain for the first 30 years, but once I managed to put those aside, I, I think I see people much more easily and I connect with them much more easily than I ever would have if I hadn't become disabled.